Hello everyone and welcome to Not Your Average Gun Girls. We are here at Turning Point USA's Teen Student Action Summit in Washington, D.C. And we will be right back to kick it off with some great guests right after a word from our sponsor, Rajuve Med Spa. Average Gun Girls. We are here in Washington, D.C., finally on location in Emily's town. Finally. We are at the Turning Point Convention. It's the Teen Student Action Summit, and we have just been having a fantastic time here. So Emily, how great is it to not have to travel to our cities this time? Oh my gosh, it's been amazing. I didn't have to like pack tons of suitcases, figure out, I mean, I still had to figure out what I had to wear, but Naturally. just the, the, the stress of not having to pack and like, it's just been so nice to just kind of have you guys here and take you to like places around and it's just been awesome. I love it and to be in the heart of where everything yes. is happening. I've, there's so much energy here in this town and this is such a wonderful organization. You guys have heard us talk mm -hmm. so much about it. We were at the Young Women's Leadership Summit with Turning Point just a couple of yep. months ago and you got to meet so many awesome Turning Point ambassadors that were there at that event and we are here with even more fantastic ambassadors and we want to introduce you guys to just one of our great friends. We're so proud to have you on the show. Well, thank so you. glad that you're here everybody. Uh, give a big warm welcome to Miss Kendall Jones. Hello everyone. Now Kendall you've thank been you attorney on the yeah. show. Yeah absolutely. You've thank been you attorney point me. ambassador for how long now? Um, about a year. I met Charlie back at NRA in May of 2018 and he invited me to the Young Women's Leadership mm -hmm. Summit in 2018 and then I went to SAS last December and now I'm here. Now yeah, I was awesome. at the Young Women's Leadership Summit yeah. this past year. Yeah. How has it been being here in DC at this conference for you? Um, it's been awesome. I mean, it's only my, really my second time to DC. The last time I only had two hours. So I really want to <laughs> yeah, get I don't, know about, I don't know if that counts. <laughs> yeah. I was only here for like a split second, but I went and got to see a few of the monuments and stuff. So I want to get out and see more of it. But yeah. this event is just great. A lot of awesome speakers and just empowering people to hear and especially to see the president speak live. That was pretty amazing. How cool uh, was that? Yeah. I mean, I, I've never seen any president presidential candidate, any president speak live. Never. And I mean, it doesn't matter who the president is at the time. I think it would be cool to, to see somebody yes. speak live. Yeah. But being in that room yesterday, I feel like we were getting a private event with the president because there were about 14, 1500 people, I think, yeah. in the room. Yeah, not and big at all. And we're up well, and it didn't and Right. And it didn't, it didn't feel like that. You know, I feel like I, I like my thought in the past have been like, if I was ever going to have an opportunity to see the president speak, it would be like huge auditorium. Yeah. Like, like yeah. almost 20, like a, a, an arena. Style. Yeah, yeah, a stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and it just felt like so intimate. And we were like, yeah. second row, right just, there at the front. Yeah. I mean, you got up close and personal. Yeah, you it was got like to he see. was speaking yep. to you. Totally. It, it was my second time to see him speak. I saw him speak at NRA last year, so obviously a big auditorium. Every so, time we are at the NRA convention, <laughs> Emily and I always go to the Women's Leadership Forum. Uh, the oh, lunch yeah. that yeah. take, they always put it on the same day as when the president speaks. Yeah. And they, you know how they shut everything down so many hours prior mm -hmm. to yeah. the president getting there. They always like lock us in this room yeah, and we, we can't couldn't. leave. So we've never been able to see him. Yeah, no, um, that was my first time to see him speak. And each time it's 
it's just awesome. Like, I love him before. But, like, just hearing him and hearing what he has to say, it just gets me pumped. There was so much. I thought we were in a rock. I was like, well, this is the teen student action yeah. Sunday. So, we, we've got kids that are ranging. I saw a girl look like she was, like, 11 years old mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah. Very young through. And it's only high school students. So, yeah. the college kids didn't get to come to. A few of them did. Oh, a few of them did? Yeah, but okay. they only had a select few tickets. Oh, that's true. The majority of them were that's for high true. school. That's true. Well, so, I think it was, and I have nothing to compare this to since I've never seen him speak before. Yeah. But I think that having him speak at the teen at a teen event the energy and just the excitement i think was would be different than if we had seen him at like an, an, an adult yeah. event because like the Absolutely. energy from these young kids mm -hmm. and like just their positive emotion and outlook and just overall just I feel like belief in our country is, I mean, it just is infectious. And I was right. just like, oh my gosh, these kids are And they were so respectful. Is, the yeah. kids did such a great job. I yeah, mean, they, chanting they and yelling did. And They made it so, I thought we were at a Jonas Brothers concert. Yeah. Right. And like, people were so excited to see him and to hear somebody that does, that is standing up and fighting for all of our rights. Yeah. I mean, the, the big issues for the next election, freedom of speech, uh, freedom of, to, the right to bear arms. You know, the Second Amendment is big, and he did speak a lot about that at the conference mm -hmm. yesterday, which I was really glad that he brought that up. And yeah. it's like being in there with that many people who are just happy that somebody is representing that yeah. was really cool. I just think it's incredible that the youth are getting involved yes. in politics. Yeah, did you care, care about our president? <laughs> because I know when I was in high school, that was not my top no. priority. No, like, no especially I, I couldn't vote. I was not about to care who was running for president when I was 14 and 15 years yeah. old because I'm like, I can't vote for another four years. Right. Who cares? Yeah. You know, but these young kids are here and, and they're they excited about it. And they actually know, like, what's going on. Yeah. Like, they actually have a grasp mm -hmm. about current events, which yeah. is incredible. Well, I yeah. think that's a, that has a lot to do with social media, what's yeah. going on social media these days. And people have the news at their fingertips. Mm -hmm. it, Real or fake, they've got right. the news out there. <laughs> yeah. They're getting it. They're getting it from somewhere, and they're 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 getting all their information there. And so I think it makes it easier to get involved in the things that you want to get involved mm -hmm. in. Yeah, you know? we love to hate social media, but it it does yep. good, especially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For events like this. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of social media, yeah. you know, with, without <laughs> social media, we may not know Kendall Jones. Right. That's very true. I don't know if we, our paths would have ever crossed. And the fake news. Fake and news. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do with it as well. You know, uh, if, if you followed Facebook back in the day, that was about <laughs> back right. Back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> you know, Kendall Jones was a name that I heard all the time because I had just started working with the NRA. And I, I don't know if I would have followed the story as closely without it. But I, I had to go find out this girl has taken a lot of flack mm -hmm. for some photos on Facebook and not the kind of flack for something that you're probably thinking. <laughs> <Right>. uh, <laughs> so explain what happened back so, in, what, 2014? Yes, it was actually basically July 1st, 2014. And um, most people are like, your name sounds so familiar. You look so familiar. And so I'm like, do you remember that girl that was a Texas Tech cheerleader who went hunting in Africa? They're like, that's, That's you. you. <laughs> so, like, if I just say text tech cheerleader hunter, they're like, I know you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I went on a safari back in 2014. I grew up hunting my whole life. It was my fifth trip to Africa. And um, I was hunting the big five. Me and my dad were big game hunters. So can we... Because I'm not, I'm not familiar with hunting. It's the big five. <laughs> She's going to have to break yeah. all the lingo down need. for I'd, us. I'll break it all down for you. So, um... <laughs> The big five is the most dangerous animals in Africa. Okay. It's the elephant, leopard, lion, rhino, and Cape, Cape buffalo. Yep. Okay. And then there's the dangerous seven. So it's Jeez. those five <laughs> plus a crocodile and hippo. Okay. All right. So, so you were going to I was hunt one of those five things or all uh, five things? All thi of them. All five things. Yeah. Okay. I was actually trying to do all seven of them. Okay. But I only got the five. Okay. Wow. Um, so whenever I posted my um, pictures on social media, the anti-hunters got a hold of them, put them on all of these, like, big group sites and whatnot. And so I started getting a lot of hate, a lot of Jeez. hate. And then the media picked up on it and the news picked up on it. I was on every major news network. I was even on um, Germany's biggest newspaper as oh the baby-faced killer. Yeah. <laughs> that Those are the headlines. <laughs> baby-faced killer. Um, I was... I think it was like the Netherlands or Switzerland. I had a friend that lived over there and she was like, you're on the newspaper here. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. It was literally like worldwide news. You would have think I like yeah. did something so incredibly terrible.
terrible, but yeah. everything I did was legal. Mm -hmm. so. Right. Well, and ex explain the process because a lot of people don't understand the conservation aspect mm -hmm. of hunting, especially when you're going to places like Africa. So explain that as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, there's a lot that goes into hunting. A lot of people think that you just go out and shoot the first thing you see. Mm -hmm. There, ha There's no technique behind it. You just do whatever and you don't care about animals and that couldn't be farther from the truth I mean you go out and you scout the animals you don't take animals that are young that are still breeding that um, like you don't just try to thin out the population there's a reason why you're going after the animal you're going after mm -hmm. like that I had passed up many animals that I was going after because it wasn't the right one mm -hmm. like they weren't old enough they weren't mature enough like there's a lot of things that go behind it. And so in order to shoot one of these animals, you have to acquire a permit. And so obviously permits require money. Yeah. <laughs> and so the a money, lot of money, <laughs> a lot of money. And so um, all the money from these permits goes back to conservation. And um, Africa has a huge epidemic with poaching right now. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people have heard about the rhino epidemic yeah. and the elephant ivory trade and um, all of that. So these go back to anti-poaching teams. Like there's literally teams that just go out to catch these poachers that, um, and that is the true reason why these animals, um, numbers are dwindling mm -hmm. because of poachers, right. not hunters. Exactly. And, and I assume the poachers have no kind of rules or regulations. They're no, no, they're no, just, that's they're the just whole point. going, right? They're, they're just, just going yeah. out. And so yeah. the difference between poachers and hunters. So hunters have the permits, they do it all legally they only take what's necessary they do all the research mm -hmm. to hunt an animal poachers go out and kill everything they see okay and um they the main reason they go after the rhino is because it's big on the black market for their horn so okay. they'll literally just kill a rhino chop its horn off and leave, leave it. its body oh and my gosh that's horrible that's so yeah, sad and so like whenever i kill an animal of course we take um this the hide and if it has tusks or if it has a horn or whatever we take that but all of the meat from those animals goes back to the villagers and what people over here in america don't understand they don't have a walmart just around the corner they don't right. have a grocery store like the i saw firsthand these people still live in huts that they make themselves mm -hmm. no electricity no running water and they um they have to farm what, like mm -hmm. they have like little gardens next to their huts that they that's yeah. their food for the year and elephants can still run wild yeah. and the amount elephants eat they if they go into those crops they just took their food yeah. for a year yeah. so obviously they want to kill them right. so um, we donate all that meat back to the villagers I mean I saw 300 people show up to um, wow. get the meat from my elephant and it it's just an eye opener. It's sure. incredible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, you know, a lot of people don't understand. We had a buddy that got the permit or the tag for, I believe it was the black rhino. You know, oh, with yeah, it. yeah. And what people didn't get was the reason that they even put that tag up was because that was an adult male that couldn't even breed anymore. And yeah. what was happening mm -hmm. was he was killing off all the younger male rhinos yeah. that were going to be able to breed, you know? And, exactly. and so it was like, at that point, people just didn't understand. They were very upset with what happened. And, you know, I, I get it. I'm not a hunter, yeah. you know, it would be very hard for me to, to go hunting. I'm not opposed to it because I understand what's going on mm -hmm. with the conservation side and how, if you, you have to help the situation because otherwise if that, older rhino kills all the younger ones around there. Like exactly. how are they going to continue and to multiply? At least you're getting money for it mm. to, that goes back to save the other right. ones. Right. Mm -hmm. Like risk one to save more. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, another cool thing that I learned while I was over there is there is, uh, like parts of Africa where elephants are overpopulated. There's too many elephants mm -hmm. in the area. And so a little fun fact is elephants have, I believe it's six sets of teeth. I could be wrong on that. <laughs> so you can fact check me, but yeah, they have a certain number of sets of teeth. And so whenever they eat, they'll go down and then they'll shed those teeth and more oh, come up. Well, um, they eat like leaves and stuff, yeah. but, since it's overpopulated, all the leaves are gone, so then they start eating bark, which 
wears, wears her, her teeth, teeth down. down faster. Mm-hmm. They go through those sets of teeth so fast that they end up dying of starvation. Oh, my god! Wow. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. So um, I was talking to one of the guides over there, one of the professional hunters. Yeah. And he was telling me all of this. And I was like, wow, I didn't even think of it like that. Yeah. So... Man, well, I, I know that obviously you were able to provide a lot of education, but that had to have been a difficult time for you. How in the world did all that criticism affect you and how did you deal with all of it? I get that question a lot and honestly, it really didn't bother me. I know that's like, so like what? Um, it just didn't feel like it was me because I knew what I was doing. I knew what yeah, I stood for. Right. I knew you who know, I am. Yeah, exactly. And so like... I knew what I was doing and why I was doing it. So like it did, it really didn't affect me. I'm like, these people aren't even doing their research. Like Mm -hmm. I was watching the news literally have headlines that weren't even true. Kendall Jones kills a cheetah and a tiger. I'm like, when did I do that? (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember doing that. I wasn't there for it. So like I saw firsthand how the media can skew things, Yeah, you know? Um, I think it's important if you if you you stay true to yourself and you know who you are. Mm-hmm. Then it's it's definitely a lot easier to deal with that kind of social media like yeah, you know, absolutely. And, like and hatred. From I people. couldn't imagine having someone that isn't strong go through what I went through yeah. because if it was if I wasn't strong, have a hard backbone, mm-hmm. like raised by tough-willed parents, you yeah. know, then um, I wouldn't have handled it great. Yeah. But it really didn't affect me. I never cried over it. I was never fearful for my life. I um, I was like, these people, like, it. I felt bad for them because of, like, some of the things that they said. Like, how can you be so sick in the mind to say that yeah. to another human? Mm-hmm. Like, you – you must be really tough behind a keyboard because not one yeah, person. Yeah, all the has keyboard. It. Yeah, all the keyboard not warriors. Not one person has ever said anything to my face. And, and they won't. Yeah. They won't ever. They're yeah. not going to do that. So you went down. You you got the big five, and then you have continued to post your hunts after that. Um, yeah. On social media. Yeah. So I I've continued to hunt since then. I um actually went back to Africa two years after that and um finished my dangerous seven with a crocodile. So oh wow. Um I got that and I've just been hunting mainly around America ever since. Wow. And so I know that we to- this is happening a lot. You know, in terms of like I know we see it in the specifically in the gun world in terms of yep. um censorship and Kendall you definitely are seeing it a lot on your social media and you're with firearms as well but mainly because of your hunting I think it's whereas the Facebook incident was like you killing you know they were making false accusations about what you're killing but when it comes to Instagram Instagram is now censoring you based on the photos that you are posting yeah so it started with Facebook I mean when everything happened Facebook deleted all of my photos and um now it's gotten a little bit better and on instagram i will i'll get like a notification every once in a while and it's like we deleted a photo from like three or four months ago so like if you go and look at my social media you won't see and you scroll back really far there's no hunting photos because they all get deleted like four months after i post them all of them uh, major not all of them, but majority of them, because I'll get blasted by like some anti hunter or like some celebrity, and um, they'll have all of their people come just over and just photo. report the photos, and they'll go back like all the way back to 2014. Like, yeah, and you have nothing better to do with your time. I know. Yeah, was it Miley like, Cyrus one of the? Yeah, celebrities so, uh, that uh, recently was Miley, blasting you. Yeah, Miley Cyrus posted about me. Candace Swain pulled the Victoria's Secret model. Um, Joanna Krupa, Krupa. I don't even know how to say her name, <laughs> but she was a desperate housewife. Um, desperate. Uh, <laughs> and then Ed Westwick, which was Ch- Chuck Bass, all yep. the Gossip Girl, and Demi Lovato posted about me. I g- haven't even said this one. Hillary Duff. She said, from one Texan to another. I'm like, listen here, Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I had a lot of celebrities post about me. And I'm like, yeah. that's just 
terrible. Like, you know what it's like to be in the spotlight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why would you cast hate on someone? Like, I would not ever do that. Yeah, I would love to pick and choose their morals that yeah. they'll stand out for. So like you, whatever's like, going to suit them that exactly. day. Exactly. I mean, maybe, like, post something that you don't have to agree with it. Like, yeah. I've posted about... For instance, Hillary Clinton, I don't agree with her. Um, <laughs> but I'm not ever going to say, hey, I'm going to come shoot you in the face. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what Joanna Krupa did. She said, I wish I could shoot her ugly. Beep. <laughs> that is I'm dumb. like, that's. I know. Take the high yeah. road. I yeah. mean, that's what we have, have just had to learn to do, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times. No matter what it is, when you face opposition, like you're faced with a choice of how are you going to respond to these yeah. people. How are you, where, what are you going to say back to them? Yeah. You know, and luckily for you, this has actually ended up being a really good thing. And oh, this has really sure. helped, you know, your career path and propelled you to do a lot of things with, with several industries. You yeah, know? absolutely. I have expanded from the hunting industry. I'm in the gun world politics now. Mm -hmm, and, yeah. Um, I've just had like a lot of opportunities come from it. So as much as they hate it, they made a career for me. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, like, th thanks. Yes. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah, that absolutely. is something to look so, at for sure. But now I just have a voice for hunters, especially because we're so small in the grand scheme of things. Um, we have a voice for hunters and um, just getting people into the outdoors. Like I don't even care if people hunt or fish. I just want people to experience the well, outdoors. Well, I think like, Get off the couch. Stop right. playing video games. Yep. Like, yep. Let, like, go out and see the world. I know for most people like myself, like, when I think of hunting, you know, I, I think, I guess, I would consider it more, more like, local. Like, the deer and, like, yeah. the fishing and things like that. Like, I never think about or the broader aspect of going to Africa and helping those villages and mm -hmm. helping to helping the conference conservation of the other countries. Yeah. So I think it's great that you're out there as an ambassador and kind of sharing that information. Cause I don't think a lot of people realize no, that. Educa yeah. Educating education yeah. is key in a lot of these industries that are very easily misunderstood. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. And just how the media can twist all of the things. And oh, of course. Well, we know that we're, yeah. we're all very aware of how yeah. that happens, for you sure. know? Yep. So. Well, I'm, I'm proud of you. And I'm glad that you're doing that. So on the gun topic, uh, you know, obviously we're not your average gun girls and we love to bring <laughs> people on that talk about their stories. And there's a lot of women that are trying to get to that point where they're trying to figure out what's the best self-defense mm -hmm. tool for them, how they want to defend themselves. Do you have your license to carry? I know we've talked about this before. Yes, um, so I actually don't yet. Um, and the reason for that is I am teaming up with a concealed carry class and it's actually an online class that their main idea is they want to get women ages, I guess, 21 to like 34 mm -hmm. where yeah. that age gap mm -hmm. is that women don't like really go out and get yeah. concealed carry. Um, and we are going to be coming up with the Kendall Jones edition class. And so we're going to document my journey That's going awesome. and awesome. getting my personal or my concealed carry permit and then making a class out of it. And they have all of these online courses that awesome. um, they're going to make just to make women feel more comfortable no, I think getting that's great. it. Will it be state specific? Uh, the courses? Yes. Okay. So they're in, I don't know the exact number, but it's around 40 different states where they have online courses. And so you can go online and take your online course. Mm -hmm. And then if it requires an a in-person, class, right. you can go in class. They have teamed up with Cabela's and Bass Pro Shops. And, cool. Um, Has that launched yet? Um, they have launched. Okay. So they're, the company is called Legal Heat. Okay. And so they already have some online classes and things cool. like that. Um, but my personal class. Has okay. Them. Gotcha. So that's that's going to be, I think, a yeah, very that's exciting. fun journey mm -hmm. to watch. Oh, yeah. Well, we're seeing the numbers, especially working with Turning Point. You know, we use a lot of Turning Point ambassadors for Alexo, mm -hmm. and it, we're seeing younger and younger women that are so excited to turn 21 so they can get their license to carry yeah. and get yeah. their permit. And I'm like, God, I didn't even think about that. So I was, no. My late 20s, like early yeah. 30s, you know. I mean, and I have definitely thought about getting it, and, like, I could definitely carry if I wanted to. I feel yeah. comfortable carrying it, and, like, I know how to use a gun. I just haven't gone out and got the permit. Right. I think it also yeah. depends where, you know, where you live and where you're from. Like, while it's something I think, like, I wasn't really thinking about at 21, I think yeah. had I been a more exposed to firearms or hunting or something or living, like, in Texas, it would definitely probably be more in the forefront of my mind than, you know, where I was at yeah. that time because it seems like, you know, a lot of the, the teens here – 
the second amendment is very like they're mm-hmm. very passionate about it yeah. And, yeah you know like we said it's like well, i wasn't that passionate about that kind of stuff when well, i think you're hearing about it more too again the social media yeah. thing like you start to see on social media that, that it's easier i never thought about it. even though i grew up around firearms mm-hmm. i always had guns in my house i never yeah. thought about carrying a gun on my body yeah you know and, until i had something happen that i was like I should think about this, you know, yeah. and because I was surrounded by people that had their license to carry, it was kind of like, oh, now I see why you yeah. do this. <laughs> yeah. And I think that that's why I've been so comfortable is because people around me carry. Yeah. And so I'm like, meh. But um, yeah, it's definitely something that's been on my mind and I want to get it and get out there and at least definitely keep one in my truck yeah. at all times. Um, but whenever everything happened with me, I was 19. And okay. so I couldn't carry. Mm-hmm. And that was definitely the topic at the time was like, you need to get your concealed carry. But like at the time I was only 19. Yeah. Whenever I turned 21, things had died down mm-hmm. quite a bit. So it wasn't a top thing on my priority yeah. list. So now I'm 24. I'm getting around to it. <laughs> I'll I get will there. be getting it. <laughs> that is, that's great. Well, so you never really had anything that made you feel scared for your safety or anything after that whole incident happened with Facebook? Uh, did you? No, I was just very more self-aware. Sure. Mm-hmm. But um, I never was like in a situation where like I was fearful. Um, of course, I was a cheerleader at Texas Tech. I was in big stadiums. Um, they had a security guard actually follow me around the entire game wow. and after the game and before the game. So. Did it affect your status as a cheerleader at all with Tech after this came out? Or were they supportive of you? Um, no. So Texas Tech was super supportive. I actually I would had, hope so. Yeah, right. Tech. No, you know, they, you'd hope so. Um, I got a call from the president and the chancellor, and they were like, we know what's going on. We're getting a lot of messages and emails. Like, we just want to let you know we're not kicking you out of school. Like, you are safe here with us. We support you. We're behind That's you 100%. Awesome. Whatever you need. If you need security, if you ever feel threatened, we'll have a direct contact for you. Like That's, so like, they unheard, that's like unheard yeah. of now because right. I wonder if that happened nowadays, yeah. if the school would be as inclined to do that because you know how. Well, cause cause every, I mean, cause uh, it's in West Texas. So you would I hope. hope. Yeah, you right. would hope. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was actually thinking, like, whenever I was picking colleges, I actually got accepted to University of Texas in Austin. And I'm like, that would have been an absolute nightmare. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh-huh. So um, I made a good choice with my school, <laughs> and I'm a proud alumni. So yeah. um, as far as the cheerleading part went, um, they didn't necessarily like me posting that, like, saying that I was a Texas Tech cheerleader. Okay. okay. Um, but just because of safety and stuff, but I was like, you can't live in fear. Yeah. You know, like it's who I am. It's what I do. Like I'm passionate about it. And so I kind of put up a fight and I was like, I'm going to post about it. If um, the football players can promote that they're football players right. for the university, I can promote that I'm a cheerleader. Yeah. I mean, I think that's part of the power of social media. It's allowing everyone to dive into their passions and share those things. Because if if, if Mm -hmm. we didn't have that avenue or the outlet to share some of our passions, like we would not have like met each other and we wouldn't have created these communities. So it's just to to turn around and say, no, you can't share something that that you're passionate or believe in. I just... that irritates me. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, like that was a huge part of my life. Right, like, cheerleading was over hunting for a long t- for the three years that I did cheer. I ended up not cheering my senior year. I mean, a lot of stuff went on. I was burnt out over it. I just wanted to get through with school. My dad passed away January 2016, so that was my junior year. Going into senior year, I was like, I have too much on my plate. I don't want to do this mm-hmm. too much time. So, I ended up not trying out my senior year. Um, which I don't regret it because I had a blast. Um, but I had an awesome time the three years that I did cheer, mm-hmm. and I lived out my dream. It was my dream to be a college cheerleader Aww. on the sidelines. I've cheered since I was three years old. Oh, so, my God. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Literally flipping out of the womb. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, my gosh. So. Well, what's next for you? What's next? Man, um, I have a lot of things coming up. I actually just got done filming my story. So like a little documentary cool. film. We don't know when it's going to launch yet yeah. um, or where it's going to. We're kind of in the works of that. 
But um, so that's going to come out. And then I am working on another like mini series that's going to be like 10 minute episodes called The Cody Project, which Cody was my dad. Oh, and um, it's going to be he left me with a ranch, a high oh. like a, a high fence exotic oh, hunting wow. ranch. And so um, it's just going to be like life on the ranch after my dad passed away. How how we're taking it over, what we're doing with it. Yeah. Um, just me out there doing boy work, you know. <laughs> Ride the tractor? I, yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually learned how to drive a skid steer, so that was fun. I don't even I know, don't what, know that what that is. is. <laughs> it's one of those things that has the forks on the end that lifts things up, and you can back oh. it. The, I mean, I think there's a lot of different uses, but I use it to move pallets of grass. I was going to say, is so it like, kind of like a forklift? I, it's something. Sound, looks I feel like, like a really the, bad Texas way, girl right now, the way like you're not knowing what that it, is. I feel like... It might be a forklift. Yeah. Yeah. You like it has the things that you can put yeah. up and move things. I think, and then I think, I think I've think seen those at Costco. <laughs> yeah. I think, <laughs> that's, I think that's it. I think you can put um, like different, I guess, accessories on okay. it where you can like blade roads and stuff. But okay. I just move pallets of grass. I did basic one <laughs> kids steer class. Well, if people want to go follow you and show some support, where can they go find you on all your social media platforms? Yes. Um, on Facebook, if you just search Kendall Jones or if one you L or two L's. Two L's. <laughs> K-E-N-D-A-L-L. I know there's like a ton of ways to spell it. Um, so Kendall Jones on Facebook or slash official Kendall Jones if you want to type it in. And then on Instagram, it's underscore Kendall Jones underscore. And I just got verified. So Woo-hoo. I'm pumped about that. It's only been five years, but it's okay. Um, and then Twitter, I'm not as active on it. But um, you can follow me there, which is the same thing, underscore Kendall Jones underscore. And then my website is thekindlejones.com. Cool. So and they'll update all of us on when your documentaries yep. and miniseries yeah. come out when yeah. they do. Yeah. That's awesome. And I'm going to be doing um, a bunch on YouTube as well. Okay. Oh, that'd so. be great. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming on our show. Yes. Well, thank Once you for having time. me. I've had a blast. I can't believe it's already over. I know. It goes by so quick. Yeah, it does go by quick. <laughs>